I'm Dan Biddle. My name is Murray Dubin. And together we have written a book called Tasting Freedom, Octavius Caddo and the Battle for Equality in Civil War America. Caddo uh, was both a unique and... Caddo is, in, eight, in the 1800s, he's an educator, teacher, and he runs the boys' school at certainly the best black school in Philadelphia in the nation, and perhaps the best school in Philadelphia. He's also a civil rights activist at a time when there are very few civil rights for free blacks in the North. And he's also, um, as strange as it may sound, in the 1860s, he's a baseball player. In fact, he's a baseball manager. Um, he, he's also a political leader at a time when there are very few blacks involved in politics. He's at the forefront of many of the important battles of the 19th century for blacks who live in the free states of the North in the United States. This book it really represents bringing Caddo back to life because he's been lost. Uh, he and a number of other uh, extraordinary black men and women who lived in the 19th century and um, who did feats that would be in, in movies and television and radio today, uh, they've been forgotten and the book is an effort to bring them back to life. Well, we did a lot of research in this building, the Library Company of Philadelphia, and at the Historical Society of Pennsylvania. We went to several other cities. We read a lot of books that have been written about uh, elements of what you could loosely think of as the 19th century civil rights movement. Uh, lots and lots of newspapers from those days, both the mainstream press, the Philadelphia, Washington, and New York papers and some other cities, but also the black press, which notwithstanding being a history major myself in college, I would never really appreciated that there was a, a vibrant and a really strong black press by the middle of the 19th century. And some of the records of those newspapers and periodicals were crucial to what we tried to do. We also had to um, look at diaries of some of the um, black men and women that we wrote about. We looked at their correspondence because the white newspapers of that time really did not cover the black population. There also was uh, an active abolition press uh, and um, we scoured those newspapers. And I mean, there was a great deal we didn't know and it took us, um, it took us more than seven years to do this book. And so when Murray and I embarked on this long, strange expedition to unearth Octavius Caddo and the, the amazing people around him, we had to come to grips with that. Were we just telling a story that had already been told a long time ago? And, and we came to realize that that was not the case. We were attempting to tell a story that should have been told a long time ago. Basically, we both were, um, you know, were sort of blown away by Octavius Caddo and what he accomplished, and a little disappointed and saddened that um, we had never heard of him. We didn't know who he was. We're both from this area, from the Philadelphia area, and we didn't learn about him in school. And it just seemed like a great tale that we ought to tell. Um, and as we researched Octavius Caddo, we learned to our surprise that he was not alone, that there were other men and women who were involved in the mid-1800s, mid excuse me, uh, in trying to secure civil rights for um, free blacks in the North. And our reaction was, why do we know this? Why, why haven't people written about this? So we've made the book, quite frankly, a little bigger, and we use Octavius Caddo's extraordinary life uh, to tell the bigger story of the civil rights movement in the 19th century. And I don't think it matters whether we're white, black, or green. We just think it's a really, really good story. And actually, you know, part of this uh, uh, 
we had to sort of be educated and re-educated and then re-educated again. And um, it's taken us way longer than we planned. But it's also because we really, we really, despite being, you know, college educated grown-ups who thought we knew something about American history, I think it's fair to say that our understanding of America's racial history has been completely changed by this research.